Oh, you're perfect. <laughs> oh, that looks so awesome. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ben, and in this video I'll be reacting to Percy Jackson and the Olympians episode 2. Now I really liked the last episode, even though they did change a few things, so I need to, I'm guessing they'll probably still have some things changed going forward, and I'm kind of happy about that, because it still leaves some surprise for someone who still knows the entire story. Like the way they've changed things is actually, it isn't that bad, because they haven't destroyed anything. All the changes have either been to either speed stuff up a little, or to add more to a character. I mean granted we didn't get the stuff with the fates, but Again, I think that was to help just speed things up a little. So I'm excited to finally get to see Camp Half-Blood because this should be the episode where it is. And we'll finally meet Annabeth as well. And as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe as it really does help the channel to grow. As of recording this, we are on 897 and I just cannot wait till we reach 900. Also, if you do enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there, I'll be uploading the full reaction to this episode. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. But with that said, let's just dive on in. They reach a certain age and they begin to understand. Oh, the water did pull her in. The fountain did pull her in. I do like how final Sally's death looked in the, because it was almost in the book, it was like a flash of light and she was gone. It, it alluded to her being alive. Here it's pretty, it was, she had the same fate of the monsters. So it can be said that she could be, it's more believable that she'd have the same fate. You Annabeth. Cruel when you sleep. That's a line from the book. And he's out again. It's okay. And they're wearing the shirts. That horn looks so cool. Maybe if I told you the truth a little sooner, your mom would still Please. be here. Please. Stop. You could give us some breathing room. It's so important I get here because my father's a god. Yeah. So I'm gonna go find him. Oh no, that's just gonna be met with disappointment. Oh, it's the big house. Oh, that looks amazing. Is that Mr. D? I think I know that actor. Get closer. Yes, Pimento from 99. I think I heard about his casting. Please be good. Please be good. I'm Percy Jackson. Uh, I'm new here. Yeah, you're talking to Dionysus. Peter Johnson is here. That isn't really my name. No, I guess no. I'm looking for. Oh, <laughs> he took that little to anger him. Mr. D, this is uh, Percy Jackson. Yeah, Grover. I heard him the first time. But did you? <laughs> did you just shut up. He's starting with me. Percy, the D. Is for Dionysus. Oh, you're telling him. He figured it out himself in the last book. Well, at least he told him it was a god and he had to put the piece. Mr. Bruno told him to put the piece together. The god, Dionysus? Yes. No way. Yeah, he could turn you into a grapevine. Excuse me, your highness. Oh. <laughs> I think my dad may be around here somewhere. Nah. Actually, I think I can. No, you can't. Son. Dad? Yes, no. Peter. No. Percy. Exactly. No. You are cool and I love it. Very important, I want you to do for me. Okay. Oh dear, this is so mean. Model of 1985 Chateau Aubryon. <laughs> He's trying to get him more. Mr. D, even if Percy uh, uh, was- uh, but, Grover, quiet, please. This is a nice moment. Don't ruin it. <laughs> right down that path, grab that bottle, and I'll talk to you about whatever you want. <laughs> oh, you're perfect. Oh, this looks so cool. Uh, Mr. Bruner's real name is Chiron. Chiron, that's how it's pronounced, Chiron. You're a horse. My father won't talk to me unless I get him a drink. Well, this all seems- <laughs> Mr. D is not your father. So, you, yep, you uh, know. Yes, but are you? Why must you ruin everything? <laughs> <laughs> are able to do things for gods that gods are forbidden to do for themselves. Mr. D was taking advantage of that. Yeah, shamelessly. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll start again. I'm loving the set design. The house looks amazing. This doesn't feel right. What? Success? You got the boy to camp alive. Don't overthink it. Oh, okay. So actually, okay, in the book he didn't think it was a success. He was said it was neither success or failure. That was the reason for Grover going on the quest. So Mr. D actually thinks it's just, a, like, a successful thing. Monsters can't enter it. Oh, okay, this looks amazing. The world can't touch it. How much of this is CGI? This looks very real. You here? Strawberry fields? I lost your pen sword thingy. No, you did not. Check your pocket. No, I've I lost it. Check your pocket. Check your pocket. Some magic sword. Check the pocket. Unless you surrender it, it will always find its way back to you. Yeah. Okay, so a little concerned that he ha does have the pen now. Because there was a whole thing about Luke trying to um, find a balance. There was a whole thing about him. What could he do if he had a balance sword? Now he has one. So how's training going to go? Twelve cabins. 
Oh, please tell me they're all unique. Each cabin is home to the yeah. children that God has claimed. They look awesome. They all look so unique. Great, which one am I? No one knows. Well, when do I get claimed? Well, the gods reveal their design in their own time, not before. Yeah, because they don't care. I claim you tomorrow. It might be next week. I love how Chiron's full of hope. Chiron, Chiron, Chiron. There is a place for you, here. Hermes? Hermes. God. There we go. Home to both his own children and the unclaimed. I love how full all of these sets feel. It's so cool. They feel so lived in. Everyone. Oh, your attention, kidding. please. Yeah, everyone stare at the new kid. It's better than when it was in front of the entire camp at like the dinner or something. Everyone standing around watching, yeah. Slayer of the Minotaur. And they're sleeping back in the small corner on the floor. Everything's so accurate. Oh. Yeah, famous monster that everyone wanted to kill. Give me a hard time, just do it tomorrow. I heard what happened to you on the hill. Scar, Luke! I know what you're going through, believe me. I'm Luke. There we go. Percy. And here's where that whole thing starts. I wonder how they're gonna do Luke. Are they gonna make him like really nice and like, I guess, likeable in general in this episode? That needs to happen fast. Where are you going? This isn't... Oh! Oh! Is that a nymph? That is cool. Is that... That almost looks like prosthetics. You're too hard on yourself, Grover. You always have been. Oh, who are you? I want to know who you are. Like, the makeup on that looks amazing. That's gotta be real. What's that? Just be truthful. Okay. Okay, got it. Don't know what's happening, but cool. Love the way she appeared, because the book, it describes them, like, melting out of trees. That is literally what happened. What is happening? This is new. Look at their feet. Are they satyrs or not? Is now an okay time to talk? No! Yes. <laughs> it's Sally Jackson. I think what? I know what really happened to her. Oh! Grover. But she evaporated. Yeah. Like a monster would. This is new. And that when a mortal is really close to death, Hades himself can actually reach out and- Yes, we know. Okay, so they know now? Told Percy anything yet. No, no one is gonna tell him anything. I mean, I guess they would know, because it was a flashlight, it wasn't like an actual death. It's quite cool they added it. The truth can be very dangerous if it isn't handled carefully. I don't want to lie to him anymore. It's still being dishonest by withholding the truth. So, you don't want to lie to your little friend? Too bad. I suggest you steer clear of him then. You're awesome, I love you. You have that intensity that Mr. D has, and yet you have that, like, quite, the, you have the humour and apathy as well. It's brilliant. What is this? Please tell me this is another dream. I want to see more of the dreams. The dreams are such a big part. In the middle of the nowhere, the campfire, right in a desert. It's got to be a dream. I left you here. Left you with nothing. It sounds like it could be Caron. You want what's been taken from you. What on earth is happening? One. This is usually the dream from the book. The ground spelling way, you falling into the underworld. Who was talking? That was Hades talking to him then, wasn't it? Or an evil voice. Didn't say what it was. Intense. Recurring nightmares, that's normal here. Visions. For the first time in your life, you're just like everyone else. Do you not know who you're- Am I unclaimed? No, he is claimed. And when you stop worrying about that, the sooner you can enjoy what this place actually does offer. Yeah. Glory. Interesting. It attaches itself to your name, it makes it bigger, scarier, more important. Hmm, that's different. All they mainly did was just train so that they could survive in the real world. It's with you. Hey! Oh, oh. hey! Clarice? Knock it off, Clarice. Yes! Wait, so this is the kid who killed the Minotaur. Is that right? Yeah, I'll bet. She has a wicked look in her eye. Better be ready for it when it comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's mean. She seems nice. <laughs> Why don't they mess with you? They know better. Luke's the strongest swordsman I can. Yeah, nice detail. So if I get glory, Clarice won't mess with me either? And people think I'm a big deal. Oh. Sort of. But... And my dad's got no choice but to claim me. No. You can't force the gods to do anything. It would make it harder for him to pretend I don't exist, right? Okay, this is an interesting, like, way to do this. Going for glory over just trying to survive. So are they going? Are they going to state how? Like, I oh, know they kind of have stated that monsters hunt them, but this whole purpose of this camp is to train you so you can live. I've never done anything like this before, and it looks. Super dangerous. Yeah, you never killed a Minotaur before either. Yep, you chopped his horn off. No, you pulled his horn off. How is this gonna go? Child of Poseidon Archer. No, it went 
playing snow. <laughs> I know it didn't go well in the, well, no, it just wasn't this thing in the books. Oh! Should I try again? No! no. <laughs> the Festus, Smith stuff. The archery is obviously Apollo. Oh! Great, no. Is there a Greek god of disappointment? Maybe someone should ask him if he's mm. a kid. Oh. We're gonna find the thing that you're good at. I know it. Okay, like looks so far, he's being the big brother. Burnt offerings. The gods like the smell, so it gets their attention before you say a prayer. They're actually adding this detail in. You burn what you'll miss the most. And they know you really mean what you're about to say, so they listen. That gave him hope. Are we gonna see, like, because they skipped over the ambrosia thing in the, like, medic cabin thing. And they skipped over him just summoning, like, a blue soda, which is a bit sad. But hopefully we'll get to see it at some point. Oh. Really is trying. Okay, so I like that they got out the... They, yeah, they got the whole lore dump of everything out of the way in the first episode so that they can focus on more here. The night after you left me in a new school, they that people are awful. I'm so happy they didn't brush over her death and he is like mourning for it. Good. I hope you're sitting down, but I think I've made some friends here. Oh. Real friends. Oh, you poor fool. Luke's gonna betray you so quickly. Not quickly. Mm. Imagine that. I like this, they're building it up so much. They like seeing this side of it is his hopeful, is the side he's not showing anyone else, that he's actually really happy that he's found friends. It's gonna make the portrayal that much worse. Ignoring me is one thing, but he doesn't get to ignore you. Yep, anger. I'm gonna make him see me. I'm gonna make him see us both. Okay. Like this, just anger. It's very natural. But I yeah, yeah, I th I think the book, it really didn't did it go into how angry he was at his dad? It kinda of, bombarded you with all the stuff about Camp Half Blood. So you never really got to feel how angry he must have been from everything that was going on. Hey guys. Can't sleep, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Every new kid shows up here and they think they're special. Do you think you're special? I love how mean you are, you're great. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna get that scene. Tell me you made it all up about the Minotaur and I'll let you go. I didn't make anything. He carried around the horn with you in the book. Where's that? Show her the horn! The kids gotta learn the hard way. Oh, I love how they've done Chloe's. <laughs> Yeah, water's gone. Yeah, everyone get back. Well, you'll be fine. You'll be bone dry. Go around him. Go around him. Yes! Oh, that's awesome. And it just completely destroyed the storm. And he's completely bone dry. Come on, why do shots show the floor that he is the only one just in a, like a circle with no water touching him? Annabeth? I can explain. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Wait, I know you. No, you don't. You haven't had your, like, talk yet. A night in the infirmary. Yes, I'm Annabeth. Are you stalking me, Annabeth? Yes. <laughs> well, I've been waiting to see if something like this would happen, so I'd know if you can help me. Yep, wise girl. Help you do what? Win capture the flag. And a bit more, but don't tell them everything. That comes from the Athena Cabin. We've led our team three straight wins. It's been a long time since anyone's won a fourth. Okay, I'm not sure about this. This is when they introduced Annabeth. I was hoping for a bit more. They introduced her like late in the episode. She's the one that gave Percy the original tour, and yet now she's the only at the bathroom store. She's my little sister. Are you gonna go into the backstory? Before the backstory? camp, I was on the road. Yes. A forbidden kid I met along the way. Her name is Thalia. Yes. Thalia. Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades agreed their children were becoming too powerful, so they made a pact not to father anymore. It held for a long time until Zeus. Yep, he was the first to cave. The forbidden kid attracts trouble. Monsters everywhere, just constant battle to stay alive. So Luke is the one saying this. It was Annabeth in the book. Then we saw our fight. Well, I'm especially this miss. was like a flashback. Yeah. But Annabeth and me, we did, and we've been family ever since. Not gonna mention what happened to Tha Thalia? Annabeth is the strongest warrior in camp. Was it Luke that said this? Chiron's been promising her for years. A demigod would arrive who was fated to go on a quest that even Chiron couldn't prevent. Yeah. Usually she gives up after a day or two, but she's still watching you. Can you ask her to knock it off? It's not gonna work. But what if she's right? Okay, I'm sort of, I see why they've chosen Luke to be sort of the main guy here. They want to build up that brother relationship between him and Percy. But again, that's almost sacrificing the relationship Annabeth and Percy had. But then again, you have the whole show, which will be then. So I think it does add a lot to Luke. As always, there will be no maiming. I love this set. It looks, it's huge. I she has a spear. These rules will be respected. She looks awesome. They all look awesome. Prisoners may be disarmed. Okay, so... I don't even know what my job is. They are kind of skipping over his training with the sword then. 
Oh, I love this so much. This is so awesome. Company! Move out! Okay, have a moment. Get, you need to stop going this relationship. You're with me. Oh, okay, good change. In the book, he had to catch up to her and she ditched him. Give us a moment with them. Yep, trip. <sighs> I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> but I need this to go well today. I need my father to see it go well. I mean, the whole glory approach is interesting. I guess it adds more to like motivation because he was kind of aimless at that point until he got the quest. Game on. <laughs> the hat, yes. Get from my mom. Don't worry, you'll do great. Yeah, okay, they actually have the hat. Did it have the Yankees logo on it? I think it did. <laughs> Honestly, so shocks me that no one actually dies during this. Like, they really go for it. I want to move quick. Straight through the woods to their flag. It's gonna cut us down. Annabeth's got a plan. Percy's on it. Yeah, that lovely, lovely plan. He's gonna be ready. I know it. Oh, dear. No. Oh, dear me. How bored are you? <laughs> He's playing a gecko. <laughs> Did they mention this wood was full of monsters? Oh, they, brushed, they didn't really say that, did they? Probably why he's so relaxed. I'm not noticing what's coming for him. Get up. There she is. Flag's that way. It's not here. Yeah, they know. Revenge is more fun. She's... Oh, yes, nice. She's so good at being nasty. Oh, you were not ready at all. No maiming? Yeah, I guess I'll lose dessert privileges for a while. I'll live. Yeah, she don't care. Ugh. Yep, it's electric, it will electrocute you. <laughs> yep, there we go, that's about right. I'm actually not interested in maiming or killing you. I just want you to admit you're you a fraud. He has the horn, just go get the horn. Okay, interesting change of motivation. I get, I, it almost feels a little pointless like why not just bring the horn because in the books he brings the horn with him anywhere everywhere because he thinks it's gonna get stolen that kind of clarifies that he's not a fraud but here he didn't so now hey don't believe him and you lost your shield get into the water i love how much fun she's having okay okay you grabbed it it's about time oh no no not time yet nah. just get in the water is he in the water? Is that what he's doing? No, he needs closer. Did you break it? Is it time? It is. No! There we go. You're dead. You're so dead. You're so dead. And Athena wins. Your oh, blue cabin, whatever. Blue team. That was such a good scream as well. Not bad, hero. Yep, just watching. Were you here the whole time? Were you in the water? Is that- The whole time you didn't help me? Yes. <laughs> you mean you did well in the book because you were in the water, is that why you did red hair? Because you're not in it yet. Percy. You figured it out. I'm yeah? sorry. Yep, yeah, you have. Okay. Check your arm. And, yep. There we go. This is just like the books, this is awesome. I right, a little bit like it. Everyone's still questioning it at this point. It's so obvious. I don't understand. I'm so glad you knew. It was so annoying in the books that no one got it. Look up. Is it, is it here? Is this a claiming? Yes. Oh, that looks so awesome. Your dad's come. Yes. I can't believe they left us out of the movie. Come on, please show the entire camp. Come on. Come on, big three, big three. Kneeling. They're gonna kneel. Percy Jackson, son of Poseidon. This feels so epic. Oh, they didn't show the kneeling. Oh, we're gonna go to the cabin. You are singular amongst demigods. So the mum did know, because she said, that, yeah, Sally knew, because singular. Zeus and Poseidon have been locked in a dispute over the master bull. Yep, yeah, we're getting to this bit now. Who stole it? You did. No, he didn't. Zeus is looking for a thief, claimed by his jealous brother. It doesn't look good for you, kid. <laughs> that if he doesn't return the bull by the Summer solstice in one week. One week, not 10 days? We're going with a week. Okay, time frame is shorter. You must leave immediately. 
leave? And you've just made friends. There is a third brother who has always deeply resented them both. Hades. Okay. Wait, oh wait, they cut the hellhound. The bolt is with Hades in the underworld. Okay, this is coming together a little quick. Good luck finding those guys, because it ain't gonna be me. He's claimed you. This is his will. Poseidon has ignored me. He didn't, he claimed you. You are his son. I am Sally Jackson's son. Who's Sally Jackson? <laughs> so that I could be safe here. The fate of the world Hangs Tell him she's in the underworld. Rover, now is not the time. It would help. But I have news. Rover, it would help. Sally Jackson is alive. In the underworld. It looked like she died, but it only looked that way. Grover. You want him on board the quest or not? Which means she's with him now in the underworld. It's where they want you to go too, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Everyone on board now. You can find her there. I think you can bring her back. Yeah, she ain't dead. Okay, this one feels sped up as well a little bit. Like from the book, the, uh, the pacing feels fine, but like, the story, like there was the hellhound that let them realize it was Hades. And the quest begins. Awesome. The winged, are those the winged boots? Shoes? Oh, they are. Oh, she's back. Pleasure to meet you, son of Poseidon. I'm Medusa. Oh, we can't get to see you yet. Uh, so that's all next week then. This show is doing so good so far. It's, it is a really good adaptation. Even though there are things changed that I would have personally liked included, it's still doing very well. I mean, a little disappointed the episodes aren't like a full hour long. That one was around 40 minutes maybe. So there's like 20 minutes that they could have added for an hour. And I guess that could have added the Hellhound. But still, everything feels right. It feels in line with the book. They're, all the characters feel like themselves. Mr. D especially, absolutely loved him. I know that episode, a little disappointing with Annabeth. I was hoping we'd get a whole lot more on her because this was... Her like big introduction in the book, it was when she would give Percy the tour, it was their first like introduction. Here that felt so cut short and given to Luke, which does have its own benefits because it makes them more like, I guess have a brother relationship, which they more of in the book. Oh, I get it, but it worked well in the book. They worked their relationship between Annabeth, Percy and Percy and Luke worked well in the book. But here, I guess they didn't have enough time. So they had to pick one or the other. And Annabeth has obviously more time on the road with him. So that relationship is going to develop anyway. But as Luke stays at camp, so they need to get that relationship in there fast. So I guess that's okay. Also very happy that Annabeth sussed the whole Poseidon thing like immediately or quickly. Because in the book it takes so long. Everyone's like second guessing. Oh, he's shooting water out of toilets. Yet yeah, no one's realizing it. It's, yeah, that's like the slightly annoying thing. But I'm glad that she's like no nonsense and it proves that she is the wise girl. She completely got it immediately. Just shoved him back in the water, saw the wounds heal and the claiming begun. She is Annabeth. Yeah, just thinking about the ending then, with them deciding it's Hades with very, I guess, minimal clues. That is a little, eh. Like in the book, the whole reason they think it's Hades is because he hears an evil voice in his dream. Uh, Furies, so, I'm gonna, how have I forgotten her name? Electo, she works for Hades and the Hellhound was sent by Hades. All of that pointed to Hades, so they assume, can, so they have to assume that it's there. And it came after the quest, actually. You had the whole thing with the Oracle, with the prophecy line reading, you must head west. The question is, who, why west? Where are you going? Then they point to Hades and the entrance to the underworld being in Los Angeles. That was how that worked. So they've missed over a few things there. So I'm guessing in the next episode, they're gonna have to go to the Oracle, get the prophecy, head west, and then be more specific, saying that it is actually the entrance to the underworld. Little confused on why that change was made, I guess, then, because they could have put the pieces together there after the prophecy. They did it before that, so, I mean, it is kind of a logical idea that Hades isn't in the conflict. So, of course, he'd be suspicious to be the actual one behind it. But still, it, it's, the changes aren't too bad. It still works, so it still feels like Percy Jackson. Okay, that was another great episode. It's shocking that nothing has really been bad yet. I'm almost expecting some, because this, it would be stupid to think that there wouldn't be, like, a bad thing. So, mm -mm. I don't want to be too optimistic. I don't want to say this show is going to be perfect. There's going to be flaws. But so far, nothing really that bad has happened. All the characters feel like they did in the book. The sets look amazing. The relationships are being built very well. Tensions being built. Fight scenes were awesome. It's just, it's going very well. All, all the technical aspects, plus the story and changes, it's all working. So I'm a bit of a pessimist. I always assume something's going to go wrong. So I'm still... I can't expect this to be like perfect. If it is, that would be amazing, but I, I've got to expect it to have something that I'm not gonna like at some point. But so far, everything has just been great. Walker Scobell is just continuing to prove how great he is at just being Percy. Seeing his acting is just amazing. Like that one scene where he's trying to talk to his mum, that was just, it was beautiful. Just seeing the look on his face and the subtlety 
of like his words you could like feel the pain he was in and like the anger he felt and it it all made sense and it was just great i also love his snark and the way he's like because i think i've seen the adam project and it is very fitting that he got this role because he does feel like Percy Jackson. He's got that snark naturally and it comes off so well. We also got introduced to a bunch of other characters this episode, which I'm very happy about. Mr. D, probably one of my favourites. I'm so happy that they got Adrian Pimento from Brooklyn Nine-Nine in this. I love that actor. He's absolutely great. Like here in this role, he was so, he, didn't, he played it so well, so apathetic and it was humour and intensity as well. It was so cool. Annabeth we're finally seeing and I like the detail. She had the necklace around her. Um, yeah, she had the necklace with the beads showing how long she'd been here. But I wish we did get more backstory there. We got a little bit with the whole Thalia stuff, um, but it was all spoken. I would have preferred to, I guess, have seen it. Then again, VFX budget, yeah. Because like, so they're chased down by a bunch of monsters and that's how Thalia dies. And then Zeus saves her and turns her into the tree, but they didn't actually say what happened to her, which is odd. They didn't say Zeus turned her into the tree. So they're all assuming that she's dead. So I'm guessing, are we gonna have to wait for like a load of seasons? Like, are we, we might have to wait for season three to learn. No, season two, we'd have to wait. We we'll have to wait for season two to actually learn that she's in the tree. That'd be kind of annoying, because in the book it's like stated that Zeus turned her into a tree. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, kind of, I'm still a little disappointed that Annabeth didn't get more time here, but she's going to get plenty going through this show. Because like, this was meant to be her introduction, This and it felt, she they still got a lot of her in there, just being wise, sussing out what Percy was doing from like behind the scenes with her invisibility cap. I think that worked very well, I still wish they had more interaction which we will get eventually. But the person who, of course, did get that interaction was Luke. He played very well. He comes off as very nice and brotherly and supportive, and that's because he wants to be that way. He wants recruits for his, like, whatever, his goal. And I'm kind of glad that they focused on him because he's not going to be here for the rest of the show. He's like, he's Camp Haplot. He doesn't, doesn't, but he's fall, he doesn't go with the main three. So they have to get in that aspect that he comes off as nice before the betrayal. So I think that was done, I think that choice is necessary. And lastly, I just loved Chloe. She was probably, she's gotta be my second favorite of the characters that they just that they just introduced. Actress playing her, phenomenal. Loved the like meanness in her eyes. It was just felt wicked. The smile, it, everything about her just screams that she loved what she was doing. She was a true like child of Aries. And the scream she gave when her spear was broke was the perfect hint to show just how much, how much meaning is behind it. Cause there's so much to Clarice. And with just that alone, the actress has just gone to show like the amount of power and emotion behind that item. I can't wait to get more now. I hope we do, I hope that, yeah, cause he's here for the whole show. She should, she should be. Like so far, all the cast have just been phenomenal and they've just done so well at making me like fall in love with these characters. They're doing so well at presenting what was, what was their character from the book. Now, of course we had another couple new things that they added, which was the like, I guess the nymph that Grover met. Absolutely loved how that appeared. That's got to be prosthetics and makeup because that looked absolutely amazing. It looked so real. And the way they showed her appearing, absolutely love it. It was cloaked in mystery. It was just brilliant. It goes to show the whole Satan connection with nature. That was incredible. And it was such, it was for such a short scene as well. I'm hoping that whenever like nymphs and like stuff and naiads show up again, we'll get to see them like that. But I think prosthetics stuff has kind of gone underused and people rely too heavily now on VFX and CGI and all that. It was so cool to see how much detail they had put into that costume and that look. Then of course you had like the whole glow, um, the council where Grover went to and you had to reveal that Sally is alive early because yeah, that didn't happen yet that he found out she was alive. That is, in, that is new and it's quite interesting, but it gets him, I guess that's how they deal with the whole adding more anger to him. He, want, he has anger, he doesn't want to help his dad, this is how he does it. Because, yeah, in the book, he just goes along with the prophecy here. He's kind of, he doesn't want to, but he's doing it for his mum. They build that connection. I'm glad they're building on that relationship. I think his anger is going to help when hope, when he finally does meet Poseidon. That's going to be something else to express. It's going to be, there's going to be a whole lot more tension there now that they've started building it here. So still going over some of the changes, like you had the whole thing with the Riptide being early and it returning to his pocket, so now he doesn't have to do, He did, they skipped over the sword training with Luke, where I think that was like an important moment. That was like him realizing more of his power, where he was able to disarm Luke very quickly, because he had that surge of adrenaline and that power. They, that was skipped over, and I feel like that shouldn't have been. That was a moment for their like relationship to build. But of course they can't do that, because the whole point of that exercise was to show that he didn't have the right sword, he, it wasn't balanced right, but if he had it, he was wondering, if he had the right sword, what would it look like? That was the whole point of it. Of course, here, we've got the sword. He doesn't need to find out which, what, he doesn't need to do the whole unbalanced sword thing. So it's kind of disappointing that that was skipped over. And of course, the biggest thing that I was a little disappointed about, 
hellhound not in it. I love seeing the monster designs and I would have loved to have seen that creature because I guess they didn't have the growl. They didn't say monsters were in the woods either. So are they just not there or are they waiting for that to be said? Because it feels like that should be something to just be thrown out there at the start anyway, even if you're not going to have the hellhound to set up, I guess, later events that there are things in the woods you should be afraid of. It seems like the woods are just empty and you can stroll in. Then of course you have the deadline change, which I think that works in line with the show. If they're trying to speed things up, it's nice they're keeping it consistent. And so instead of 10 days, they have a week, which is seven. So I like that they are pushing things together. They didn't actually mention what there was a summer camp and that they're all that there were year rounders and some that came just came during the summer. So I guess we're left to assume that this that everyone we saw were year rounders, which is quite interesting to think about. So they so more characters can be introduced that just weren't here yet. We haven't seen them all. Then lastly, I absolutely love the set design. The camp looks absolutely amazing. Just seeing all the cabins as well, it all felt so lived in and unique. I wish I wish we had like a longer shot of it all because there's so much stuff that, just about their exterior and design that's so unique to each like God Patreon, like uh, Artemis's shining silver in the moonlight, Apollo's being super reflective. And I wish we got a closer look at like Zeus and Hera's where it's just empty. But we got that shot of Poseidon's one, which is empty and that's, I guess, what carries on with the other two. Yeah, it's not like that's gonna be the only time we see them, so I cannot wait for those lot, the, for those structures to show up again, and just get more shots of Camp Hapla, because it's such a unique place, and it's so, I think it's just an important like location to focus on, like really flesh out. So yeah, was the, were they arranged in a circle then, or was it still a U? I'm not sure. I mean, I guess it could be a U, and just like a very short semicircle type U, but I couldn't really tell. But either way, I think just all of that scene was beautiful and I just wish we had more of it. I wish, yeah, I wish, I just wish we had more. But yeah, with that said, that does bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy and I will see you in the next one for episode three. See ya.